Hi everyone, my name is Johan Gustafsson. I'm a Bioinformatics Engagement Officer with the Australian Biocommons. Today I'll be talking about community engagement and how it influences Galaxy Australia innovation. But first, some details about the Australian Biocommons. The Biocommons is a national scale collaborative effort to democratise access to community supported tools and workflows for bioinformatics. And importantly, to make these tools and workflows available on fit for purpose infrastructure for bioinformatics. This effort has numerous contributions from the Biocommons partners and the Biocommons communities. And I'm speaking on behalf of this national effort today. The Biocommons is built on our communities. This means the requirements and challenges of our communities define our approach to bioinformatics infrastructure. So who are these communities? Our communities can be split into three broad groups. The first are the researchers. And typically we will create or align with researcher communities of practice for domains like metabolomics or proteomics, or for a specific end goal uh, in bioinformatics like genome assembly or genome annotation. The second group is our national science drivers. Key for the Biocommons are the Bioplatforms Australia framework initiatives. Examples of these include Oz Mammals Genomics and the Threatened Species Initiative. These are pre-existing communities which have an inherent structure provided by Bioplatforms Australia, but also by the researcher communities themselves. And they already concentrate a large amount of expertise, both in bench science, but also in bioinformatics. Finally, we have the infrastructures, and these are split between data producing core facilities and the Biocommons partner infrastructures. The core facilities concentrate expertise in experimental design, data production and analysis, and importantly have existing connections both to our national science drivers and to the broader community. Some examples of these include the Ramachari Centre for Genomics and Metabolomics Australia. The Biocommons partner infrastructures, on the other hand, include computational infrastructures like Pawsey Supercomputing Centre or Galaxy Australia, but also other infrastructures such as the Australian Access Federation, RNET, and the Australian Research Data Commons. The role of the Biocommons is to be the glue. We want to form bridges between these communities to discover ways to better use resources that are available to accelerate life science research in Australia and develop solutions as needed that are fit for purpose for the Australian context. To collect these requirements and challenges from this large and complex group, we need strong community engagement. The core of this is our formal community engagement process, which is outlined on this slide. I'm gonna walk you through it. We initially identify a community. We research that community to find out more about it in a general sense. We then communicate with the community through um, consultation meetings and community surveys. These consultations um, are then used to create a document that distills the requirements and challenges of the community into an infrastructure roadmap. Within this roadmap, um, we will also propose potential solutions to the requirements and challenges of the community, and then work closely with the community to deploy suitable solutions. So community consultations underpin that formal process and typically are focused on communities of practice. And the end game is to produce an infrastructure roadmap that defines high level solutions to challenges and allows us to move forward in addressing those challenges. But there are other engagements as well, including direct engagements with um, specific projects within um, the national science drivers and data production facilities, just as examples. But there are also engagements with other infrastructures 
who represent communities as well. And that's really part of that integration piece. So the question for us is how do we use this information effectively? We have to categorize and distill complex information. And this can range from compute access and compute challenges through to metadata and data submission challenges, training requirements, and key tools and workflows, as well as their availability. And this last category is the one I'm going to focus on for the remainder of the talk. And I'm going to provide two examples of what we can do with this information. And I want to place it in a Galaxy Australia context. So the first thing we can do is through the work of the community engagement team and with the contributions of our community at large, we can articulate support for tools. So our known community supported tools, we can list them. And this is what the Biocommons is trying to do with our tool finder. We want to provide a single go-to source for tools of interest to Australian researchers with metadata included from an international registry like Biotools and have a pathway for Australian users to discover and use existing international registries and services. And that's not just limited to Biotools, it's things like Biocontainers and um, the Galaxy Toolshed as well. And importantly, what Toolfinder allows us to do is articulate all of this metadata about tools in the context of our infrastructures. So firstly, we can indicate whether a tool is available on Galaxy Australia and whether it's available in the Galaxy Toolshed. But importantly, we can also extend this and articulate it in the context of our command line infrastructures as well um, to provide a tangible view of installations at our national peak infrastructures. And by having this, there are a few things we can do. Firstly, we can provide information about tools you could use today. Uh, we can provide information about tools you can request from other galaxies or information about tools you can request be wrapped for Galaxy. And this is, all, this is about providing pathways or options for researchers. Um, and another way of looking at it is we want to give a tangible view of the biocommons and how tool availability across infrastructure varies. If we know what the community supported tools are, we also know where that support has come from. And that means not only can we list those, but we can distill the community support and share it with our infrastructure partners. And importantly, we can do this in a shared space. So what I'm showing on screen now is um, a subsection of a shared Google Sheet that we use um, for agile collaborative listing of tools and where community support comes from. So we have some project management sections. Um, we have a large community support section, which actually extends beyond this page and allows us to annotate where the support um, for a particular tool or workflow is actually coming from. And we also have the ability to use this to prioritize using a heuristic approach, which is basically scoring based on the number of known sources of community support. And the whole idea here is to present a unified view of the community um, to test our assumptions or make sure that um, the tools we want to work on and the tools we think are important actually aligns with our assumptions about the community and allow prioritization within the Biocommons effort. So where we spend our time most effectively based on community need. The end game, of course, is so that tools can be made available. And from the Galaxy Australia perspective, uh, we already have a mechanism front and center, which allows users to request a new tool or data set for Galaxy Australia. But I'd like to give another example of a mediated approach where we can um, install tools 
in, in a much larger sense for Galaxy Australia and mediate community establishment or onboarding. The spe specific example that I wanted to give is that of the proteomics community in Australia. So in um, or before 2020, uh, Galaxy Australia didn't host proteomics tools. So there was no active proteomics community on Galaxy Australia. And so we posed the question, what proteomics tools are installed on Galaxy Europe? And there are many, there are hundreds. And what we did was through our community engagements, approach some of the proteomics core facilities within Australia and actually ask them, if you were to pick tools from this list that we could provision on Galaxy Australia, which ones would they, would they be? And we ended up with a subset. And we then asked whether there's collective, collective agreement. So we distilled feedback from multiple facilities and then engaged with Galaxy Australia throughout this whole process so that we could then install these tools. And so we had a pipeline to go from no tools whatsoever to having an idea of what we could install as a initial set of tools for the community. And I, quick, and I just wanted to quickly go through um, the impact um, of that approach. So if you look at all the jobs um, and the users over time, for the last couple of years for Galaxy Australia, you will see that both uh, both users and jobs are increasing. And one of the key things, if we look at a specific community, is that in the space of um, just over a year, we've had almost 70 tools installed um, as a result of that community engagement and prioritization of tools. This has led to almost 6,000 proteomics tool invocations on Galaxy Australia, where before we, there was no capacity for Galaxy Australia to, to do that. And this means that for the past 12 months, 1% uh, uh, of all tool invocations on the platform have been for proteomics. Now, this is a modest but significant growth for a community that before this um, typically wasn't aware of Galaxy Australia. Uh, and even if they were aware of it, they didn't have their specific tools installed. And I also want to point out that not only does the community engagement allow us to um, prioritize tools, discover tools that exist elsewhere and then provision, provision them back to the community, but it allows us to engage with community champions um, to achieve new outcomes. So the example I want to give is um, troubleshooting for the tool MaxCon, uh, where we are currently um, setting up dedicated uh, compute queues specifically for this tool. I want to thank the organisers of the conference for the opportunity to present today. Um, the work I've presented represents the cumulative effort of our communities of practice, our science drivers and our infrastructure partners. Uh, I want to say a big thank you to everyone involved um, for all of your efforts, um, and I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you.